times where we want to. Inside the eye, the lens muscles still can't focus, and the lens flips the image it receives. All through life, we see the world upside down. The picture only gets reoriented in our brains. Right now, the picture is on the retina, the screen at the back of the eye. The retina has two types of cells, rods and cones, which transform the light that hits them into electric signals. The cones detect color information, but because they're not developed yet, we see mostly in black and white during our first month. From the retina, the signals travel along two thick nerves under the brain. At the back is where we process visual information. When the image arrives, the real challenge begins. Our immature brains haven't learned to interpret the data yet. That's changing fast. At two months, we can distinguish colors and shades. At four months, we can identify our mother's face. By eight months, we have 20-20 vision. Along with our perfect eyesight comes a growth spurt. We start packing on pounds. We add a quarter to our body weight every month. After three months, it slows down. Lucky for us, if we kept growing that fast, we'd weigh 150 tons by age four, the same as a blue whale. At eight months, all our senses work. We're beginning to explore the world, and the sense we use most is touch. Touch something too hot, and temperature sensors in the skin send nerve signals racing up the arm, up the spinal cord, and into the brain, all at 200 miles per hour. The brain detects the signal, interprets it as pain, and fires another signal back to the muscles. We move the hand away. We have sensory nerve receptors all over our skin but some areas are more sensitive than others. The hands, face, and mouth. There are 9,000 sensory receptors on the tongue alone, which is why babies use their mouths to explore. But there's another reason for all the gnawing. Something painful is happening inside the baby's mouth. Her first teeth are coming through. Milk teeth form deep in our gums while we're still in the womb. Now, one by one, they burst through. It's painful, but it's progress. At eight months into life's 80-year journey, the senses are operating at full capacity. Every sensation is a new surprise. And with her new teeth, she can take on more solid foods. Digestion starts in the mouth. Teeth grind up the food. Then special glands under the tongue pump out saliva to help break down and lubricate the food on its 12-hour, 
13-foot journey through the gut. It'll pass from the stomach into the coils of the small intestine before finally passing into the large intestine. Waves of contracting muscle keep the food moving, a process called peristalsis. These contractions are so powerful, we can even eat upside down. For the first time, a new camera shows a high-definition view of how food travels through our bodies and into our stomachs. Food enters the stomach through a hole at the top. The stomach is a bag of muscle that churns, squashes, and squeezes food into liquid. At the same time, acids break the food down. The stomach walls protect themselves with a lining of mucus. Without it, the acids could digest parts of the stomach itself, causing stomach ulcers. About an hour later, the stomach squeezes the broken down food out through a tiny hole called the pyloric sphincter. The food enters the small intestine, an 11-foot coil of tube where we absorb most of the nutrients. The interior wall of the small intestine is lined with millions of microscopic projections called villi. These increase the surface area of the gut, making it easier to absorb nutrients. First, the pancreas pumps out a juice that neutralizes stomach acid. Then bile from the liver breaks down the fats into tiny droplets. Smaller droplets are easier for the intestine to absorb. After an hour and a half, the small intestine has absorbed most of the nutrients from the food. It's time for what remains to move on. It enters the large intestine through this, the ileocecal sphincter, a valve that keeps our food from going back where it came from. What's left is a mix of waste food and dead cells from the walls of the gut. The large intestine's main job is to extract water from it. Lots of bacteria live here too, but it isn't because of an infection. We actually need them. They produce enzymes that break down complex carbohydrates in our food, carbohydrates we couldn't otherwise digest. Finally, after about 12 hours, we expel what's left of our first meal. One year old. We're mobile. We've perfected the art of crawling.
Our bones are stronger. They need to be. We're getting pretty heavy. At birth, the skeleton is mostly cartilage, the same material as our ears. Cartilage is flexible. It's what allows us to squeeze through the birth canal. But after birth, our soft skeletons are a problem. They need to be rigid to support our growing bodies and protect our vital organs. So right from birth, the cartilage starts to harden. Special cells called osteoblasts lay down minerals that turn soft cartilage into hard bone. Some bones even fuse together. At birth, we have gaps between the plates of the skull, which allow the skull to deform during birth. Through our first year, these gaps gradually close until the skull is finally complete. As our skeletons develop, so does our desire to get around. We're about to hit one of the major milestones in life, standing on two feet. The key isn't strength, it's balance. And the secret to standing is hidden deep in our ears. Beyond the ossicles, the bones we use for hearing, the inner ear is made up of three looping structures. Each loop is the size of a dime, and they're oriented to cover all three planes. These semicircular canals are part of our ears, but they have nothing to do with hearing. They're filled with liquid, and they tell us what's up, what's down, and what's on the level. The liquid inside sloshes against sensor hairs lining the tubes. The hairs send data to the brain about how we are oriented and our direction of movement. These are our organs of balance. Once we've mastered balance, we're one step closer to walking. Now there's no limit to where we can go and what we can learn. from a baby to a toddler. We're embarking on our most formative years, a time when we'll put our growing brains and developing immune systems to the test. Age two. We've survived infancy and can stand on our own two feet. Next up, is a uniquely human challenge, learning to talk. <laughs> Talking takes a lot of brain power. A two-year-old learns 10 new words a day. This is Broca's area the region at the side of the brain used for speech production and comprehension. Language is what separates us 